Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella. So by now you've probably heard about the new 14 and 16 inch MacBooks. And right here I have the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. I've been using this thing for almost a month now for pretty much everything, like my comp size schoolwork, for editing my videos, watching videos stuff like that. And overall, this has been such a different experience from my old Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro, as well as any other computer that I've used. And now I'm ready to give you guys a full review on this base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. But before we continue, I just wanna take a quick second to tell you guys about NordVPN, which is the sponsor of this part of the video. NordVPN is a great VPN service that protects your personal data and internet activity when you're online, especially when I'm outside and connected to a public Wi-Fi, I always have NordVPN turned on so that I can have a peace of mind and know that all of my data and activity are well protected. I also like to use NordVPN to access shows that are not available to watch in Canada. And with more than 5,100 servers in 60 countries, you can really travel around the world virtually with NordVPN. And thanks to their optimized servers, you can enjoy your shows at amazing speed. So no more bandwidth throttling causing you to buffer. NordVPN is also super easy to use. You can connect to secure all of your information with just one click. And to change your virtual location, just click on the country that you want to change to and you'll be connected there. With NordVPN, you can browse the internet more securely and freely. You can use my code Ella or go to my link nordvpn.com slash Ella to get one month free when you buy the two-year plan. There's no risk to trying because there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So yeah, go to the link down below to check out NordVPN. Okay, so one of my favorite things about this laptop is that for the first time, I can have all of the power that I need in this small machine. So in the past, if you wanted a dedicated GPU to do things like video editing or a faster CPU for coding, then you would need to get the 16 inch. But this time, the 14 and 16 16 inch models are actually practically the same in terms of their performance, and the differences are mostly concerning things like the battery life and the screen size. I actually just made an entire video talking about the differences between the 14 and 16 inch, so you can check that out if you're interested. Out of the two, I definitely prefer the 14 inch. It's both powerful and very, very portable. Okay, so the first thing that jumped out to me is just how nice this screen is. It definitely blows my monitor screen and other laptop screens that I've used out of the water. In recent years, Macs typically have very nice screens, but this one is on a whole other level, especially for HDR content. HDR actually works amazingly well on Chrome on macOS. And one interesting thing that I found is that even with third-party extensions like Enhancer for YouTube, you can still have a little window that is playing in HDR while all the other content are still in SDR. The screen has very little glare, which is usual for a MacBook, and with the additional brightness, not not being able to see the content on the screen is probably never going to be an issue even when you're working outside underneath the sun. And even when compared to the OLED screen on the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro, I would say that this screen wins handily because of the additional resolution and brightness. Even though the MacBook screen is not OLED, the blooming on the mini LED screen is very well controlled and I've never had an issue with any content that I watch. To put it into perspective, if you wanted to get a monitor that has 120Hz, 4K resolution, 1600 nits with local dimming and a wide color gamut, then you're looking at spending way more than an entire MacBook Pro. I also much prefer this MacBook's 16 by 10 aspect ratio over 16 by 9 aspect ratios, which some Windows laptops have. In a comparable form factor, it is just so much more space vertically, and that's very beneficial for doing things like coding and just document work in general. And as for the notch, so I'm fine with it, but I do use an app called Top Notch that basically hides the notch by turning the entire top part of my wallpaper black. And note that the screen is in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio without accounting for the parts that are left and right of the notch. So when compared to an older MacBook, you can think of the extra space where the notch is as just extra space for the menu bar. I also found that in macOS Monterey, there are these color modes, which I found to be pretty helpful for content creation. And lastly, this screen has 120 Hertz, which is a 
amazingly smooth, at least when it works. 120 Hertz has been around on phones for a while now, and I love it. However, I think that it will be even more useful on a laptop screen. On a 120 Hertz screen, text will remain crisp even when I'm slowly scrolling through them. So I would be able to scroll through things like emails, the code base, without needing to fully stop to read things. But as of right now, many apps like the browsers and VS Code don't support 120 Hertz. The animations do look quite smooth though, but hopefully the 120 Hertz performance will be seen in many apps soon. All right, so screen aside, my absolute favorite thing about this laptop is just how crazy efficient it is. By now, you can find the benchmarks for things like video editing and code compile time pretty easily. I'll have a few links to some benchmarks down below, so I won't be rerunning them in this video. But benchmarks aside, this laptop really shines in terms of web browsing. As a CS student, I actually spent way more time browsing the web, looking for things and searching for code problems than actually writing and compiling code. So a snappy web experience is actually just as important, if not more, than fast compile time. And this laptop not only pulls insane numbers on the speedometer benchmark, it actually does feel faster when browsing around the web when compared to my Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro and even my mid-spec PC. Of course, it depends on the Wi-Fi speed, but I found that all the tabs load pretty much instantaneously. And this new architecture somehow allows it to just keep going no matter how many tabs I have opened. There have been quite a few times where I've run out of RAM on my Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM. And when that happened, pretty much everything just slowed to the point where it's unusable. But with this one, with 16 gigs of RAM, I found that even when I'm out of RAM, it's still pretty responsive, likely because the new SSD is twice as fast as the previous one. So sometimes I don't even notice it when it's using swap. And the best thing is that it does all of this while being completely silent. For some comparison, the Galaxy Book Pro 360 is technically a laptop in a lower power class with a 15 watt Intel 11th gen i7 CPU, but it needs to run its fans at a pretty audible level in order to play back a 4K 60 video on YouTube. And if I forcefully turn its fan off, then it would just overheat and drop frames. But this 14 inch MacBook, in fact, can play back an 8K 60 video on YouTube without even spinning its fans. And my Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro just cannot play back 8K 60 on YouTube at all. So it's actually such a massive gap in terms of the performance. This new 14 inch MacBook rarely runs its fans and it only gets moderately warm when under load. I would say that fan noise on this laptop is pretty much non-existent unless you're doing something that fully loads the CPU and GPU. So video rendering time is very fast on this MacBook, faster than the 16 inch Intel. But the big improvement for me is not all about the amount of times that it saves in render. So when the 16 inch Intel is rendering, it's a pain to be around. Its fans are obnoxiously loud and it's also too slow to be used for anything else. So I end up just doing other non laptop things while I wait out the render. But on the 14, it barely makes a noise during render so I can happily use it to do other light things such as checking my emails or even some schoolwork. And this saves me way more time than the quicker render itself. This efficiency also really helps out with the battery life. I found that it drops around 15% per hour when I'm editing a document while having a video playing on the side. So not super heavy things. And I'm perfectly happy with the battery life of this thing. I don't really go anywhere where I would need to be unplugged for a long period of time. And if I am, then I would just bring a battery bank. This one has the M1 Pro and the M1 Max actually takes more battery when just being idle, so the battery life would be worse there. The M1 Max only provides more GPU power, which would make video rendering time faster, but that doesn't super matter to me because the video rendering time on this is already plenty fast enough, and scrubbing through my video timeline on the M1 Pro is perfectly smooth. So I'm very happy with the M1 Pro, and I won't be going for the Max, especially because it does come with a battery life penalty. So regarding RAM, the M1 Pro is really good with handling RAM, and it does way more than I expect with just 16 gigs of RAM. However, if you know you need to use a lot of RAM, I still wouldn't recommend skipping out on the RAM upgrade because I did have this one video where I had three different cameras and a screen recording on top of it, so it was pretty heavy, and this computer was really struggling with the RAM, and as a result, my Final Cut Pro actually crashed every like two seconds. I couldn't even finish that project on this laptop. I had to switch over to my old 16-inch Intel with 32 gigs of RAM. So yeah, don't skip out on the RAM upgrade because when you're out of RAM, then you actually might not be able to finish your project, unlike a slower CPU or GPU where it'll just take longer to finish.
finish. And lastly, I want to talk about the physical aspects of this laptop and it's great. So the trackpad is very good, just like all of the old MacBooks. It clicks uniformly, which shouldn't be taken for granted because basically all Windows laptop do not click at the top. That's a massive pain, at least for me, especially when I'm coding because I love to index with just my thumb while keeping all of my other fingers on the home row of the keyboard. And being able to click at the top with my thumb is much more convenient than having to double tap or reach back to click. All right, so regarding the ports, it's super nice that there's more variety and I've got a lot of use out of the SD card reader. And regarding MagSafe, so it is very strong, but to be honest, I haven't really used it because for me, it's just more convenient to stick to USB-C and that way I can still use the stock which handles power delivery along with everything else. Um, if you want to learn more about this, then you can check out my MacBook accessories video. I talk about a bunch of great accessories for the new MacBooks in that video. And with the speakers, so I would say they're pretty good, as good as the speakers on my old 16 inch. That's going to be it for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.